today we're going to be looking at a general neurological examination with a neurological patient. So we've got our patient Craig here, who should be joining us now. So what we're looking for as a patient comes in, we're just going to observe the, walk, the way they walk. So we're looking for any gait abnormalities, any sort of any sign of hemiparesis or any sign of a foot drop. So if you can just have a seat on there. So what I like to do then, once I've got the patient perched on the edge of bed, is just have a look, sort of detect if he's cognitive, cognitively well, and just ask a few questions to check that they know where they are, and, okay, so, can you hear me well? Yeah. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, you, can, you feel okay yourself? Yeah. Any right. problems with your breathing? No. No? Any signs of troubles with swallowing? No, no. No? Any, any headaches, dizziness? No, no. Really. Okay. How many fingers am I holding up? One. Two. Five. Okay, good. Now then, can you point, as in, point to my finger? Yeah. yeah. And again, and back to you. Okay, now then, I want you to do that again. Okay. But I want you to point to my finger and point to your nose. Okay. And faster. Okay. lay your hands like this now. What I want you to do is just, what we're going to do is a, uh, yeah, I shouldn't do that, okay? No problems there, no? no. On the other side? No, no. And stop. Okay, so I've just done the finger to nose test. Um, positive sign would be indicative of Parkinson's disease or cerebellar disease. We've also looked at coordination, which was the, the hands turning over. So now we're just going to look at active, passive and resisted range of motion. Okay, yeah. so I just want you to sort of touch your arms. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Can you just let me... Okay. Yeah. Alright, now on the other side. Okay. Are you able to come out? Yeah. Yeah. Arms above your head. Arms in front of you. Yeah. Okay. Arms behind your head. Mm -hmm. Arms up behind your back. Any problems there? No. Okay. No. If you just let me have a feel of their movements. Yeah. Okay. Just relax. And we repeat this on the other side. I'm just going to look at resisted tests. Okay. Now, don't even push your forearm down. Okay. okay. Don't push your forearm up. Okay. Um, bring out your arm here. Don't even push your arm in. Okay. Right then. Right, okay. okay. And I'm just going to test. So you just relax. Yeah. So you can shrug your shoulders up. Don't push them down. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to have a look at your wrists. So you can bring your wrists up like that. Yep. From there. No, right. you bring them down. Right. Inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can put that for me. Don't you push your thumbs down. Fine. No. Yeah. And if you could do, don't even pull my fingers away. So grip them. That's it. Okay. And if you could make a pincer for me. Yeah. So what we're doing here. So you just don't let me pull my finger out. Okay. So this is an ulnar nerve test. So the patient is able to hold on to my finger there. Okay. That's great. And within the passive range motion, motion, we're also looking at muscle tones. So we just sort of have a feel, do different speeds. Higher tone may be indicative of upper motor neuron disease, and lower tone may be indicative of lower motor neuron disease. From here now, we'd also test the reflexes. Okay. We'll sort of start off with the tricep reflex.
bicep reflex. Okay. The brachialis reflex, you shake my hand and grip it. And that's it, and relax. So I'd look at his resistive test and also test the myotomes as well. So now we should have a look at sensation in his dermatomes. Okay. So I just want to have a... You just tell me if it's different on either side. Fine? It's alright. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Okay. So obviously Craig, he's fine, but in some other patients you might need to we can use a two-point discrimination test or we can use hot and cold test tubes and we can just place them in different dermatomes of the body just to check where there may be a lesion. So we can track the lesion to the spine then. Is anything going wrong? Okay, so after doing all the adequate testing, we're just going to look at a few functional activities for the patient now. It's great if I get you to lie down for me. Yeah. So what I want to see is how the patient can cope with daily activities or getting out of bed. So you're able to, from lying out to sit up, if you could do that for me. Yeah. How's that? Okay. Feels alright. You can lie back down for me. Yeah. The patient had no problems there. Okay. Now I'm going to do from lying to sit to stand. So if you can sit up for me, Craig. Yeah. Okay. And how's that? Feels no alright. And if you can stand up for me now. Yeah. Right, so once we've got the patient standing, it's, it's important to be aware that patients may present with cerebellar lesion. This will mean that they'll be unable to stand with their eyes closed or even with their eyes open. So it's a bit important to be aware of that. So obviously be close to get, getting close and guard them in the garden position. From here now, we'll just go for a, a stroll down here. Just get in with them. I come back. Okay, and that's the a generic neurological examination.